So far, we've looked at the browser and attributes. We've looked at the master page. We've looked at the effects page. We've looked at the arpeggiator. And today, we're going to take our first look at expert mode. Now, you might be thinking at this point, well, hasn't he missed a step? I mean, what about the Easy Morph section? Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the Easy Morph section. We're going to do that in the next video. The reason I want to introduce you to Expert Mode first, and then go back to the Easy Morph section, is it's a lot easier to understand what the Easy Morph section is doing if you've already been introduced to some of the basic principles of FM synthesis. And that will become clear in the next video when we look at the Easy Morph section. So what are we looking at? Well, over here on the right hand side, this grid is our FM matrix. And these first six boxes here, they're what's known as our operators. They're basically the source of all our sound. They're capable of generating a variety of different waveforms, 32 in total in fact. But by default, they're all set to sine wave. Uh, in FM synthesis, they tend to be referred to as operators rather than oscillators, like you'd have on a subtractive synthesizer, but it's basically the same principle. They generate a waveform like an oscillator. Don't worry about X, Z and IN for the time being. They're a little bit different. X is a noise generator and saturator. Z is a filter. And IN is basically our external audio signal if we have one coming in. But as I said, don't worry about those right now. At the moment, only one of our operators is actually turned on and connected to the output, and that's operator F. So when we play a note, operator F is what we're hearing. You can turn an operator on or off by right-clicking it. And this white liner here represents the fact that it's routed to the output. If I click here, where it says 80, and drag, I can turn the amplitude of the oscillator down or I can turn it right the way up to 100. If I click and drag it right the way down, that routing will disappear and F is no longer routed to the output. And all I have to do to route it back to the output again is just click there and drag. So that white box at the interjoining section of the grid is telling me how loud operator F is. It's 100. That's as loud as it'll go. If I click underneath that and drag, I can pan it left or right. If I want to get rid of that panning quickly, I can just double click. If I click on operator F, it'll bring up a page for operator F and I can change the level here as well, as well as the panning. I can also use this velocity knob to control to what extent velocity affects the amplitude of operator F. So if I turn it right up, it'll be very sensitive to velocity. If I turn it right down, it'll be sensitive in the other direction. So actually, the softer I play on the keyboard, it'll be louder, and the harder I play, it'll be quieter. And we've got a potentially very sophisticated amplitude envelope here. Just above it here, we've got an amplitude modulation section where we can route modulation from other sources. We're going to cover both of those in a later video. Here in the waveform section, we can click this menu here to select a different waveform, like a triangle or a sawtooth, or a more complex hybrid waveform. But we're going to leave it on sign for now. Key sync means that the cycle of the waveform is restarted every time you hit a note. And invert inverts the polarity of the waveform. If we were to turn on another operator and route that through to 100, put that on key sync mode, and invert it, we can't hear anything because they're playing in perfect synchronicity and therefore they cancel each other out. If we uninvert it again, it doesn't sound any different really from F playing on its own, it's just twice as loud. But if we change the ratio of E, we get a more harmonically rich sound because we're adding another frequency. The best way to understand ratios is if we say that 1 is the fundamental frequency of the note, then 
2 is the fundamental frequency times 2. 3 is f times 3, 4 is f times 4, etc, etc. And these frequencies are known as harmonics. So with E and F together, we've got a more harmonically rich sound than we had before because we've got F supplying the fundamental frequency and we've got E supplying the second harmonic. But this isn't FM synthesis, this is additive synthesis because we're adding two sine waves together. In FM synthesis, rather than adding waveforms together, we can use one waveform to modulate the frequency of another. So if we root E into F, that will radically change the timbre. It's basically like a very, very fast vibrato that's so fast that it actually creates an audible tone. You'll see what I mean if I set the ratio of E down to zero and then gradually bring up the offset frequency, you'll hear the frequency of F being modulated. You see what I mean? One of the really handy things we have in FM8 is this spectrum analyzer, which shows us to what extent we're applying modulation to the sound. So it's just a pure sine wave there, but as we increase the amount of frequency modulation from E, so the best way to think about these operators is as potential modulators or carriers. The carrier is the operator that you hear, in this case F, and the modulator is the operator that is modulating the frequency of that carrier, in this case, E. The best way to think about it in terms of crafting your sounds is carriers are for amplitude, modulators are for timbre. If we go ahead and start changing the level of F, it's not affecting the timbre of the sound, it's affecting the amplitude, it's making it quieter or louder. If we go and change the level of E, which is our modulator, that doesn't affect the volume or the amplitude, that affects the timbre of the sound. And the timbre is going to be different depending on what frequency or what harmonic is modulating the carrier. The higher the ratio, the more high frequency overtones will be present in the sound. And in terms of using modulators and carriers, it doesn't have to be either or. An operator that's being used as a carrier could also be used as a modulator. For example, if I turn on operator D and route that through to the main output, I'll put that on the third harmonic, I could use F, our carrier, to modulate D. So F would be used not only as a carrier, but also as a modulator. And you can modulate a modulator. I could use D to modulate E. And you'll see that the more modulation there is, the more complex our waveform is becoming. So, Carriers and modulators, carriers for amplitude, modulators for timbre. In the next video, we're going to look at the easy morph section, and it'll become apparent at that point why it was so important to establish these principles first. So I'll see you in a bit. Thanks for watching.